Extension? Yeah. It's, it's a third, right? Yeah, 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 third. Okay. So, um, it is expected that the so-called partial lockdown would be lifted okay. because it has not made any impact as we all said. 
I mean, everyone, most people shared that view. It didn't make much of an impact. It didn't curb the spread of the virus. Luckily for us, if the numbers that are being reported are anything to go by, coronavirus hasn't done much of a damage to us. It really hasn't. Uh, we have less than, what, 30 people dead? I'm not saying that's okay, but that is considerably, significantly lower compared to many other countries. We have under 300 uh, COVID-19 cases, right, Walker? don't we? Yeah, we do. That is also very considerably low. Uh, it hasn't really caused much damage to our economy, well, I mean, to our healthcare system, as broken as it is, to our population, as vulnerable as they are. So I think, you know, being the spiritual person that I am, I think it's God, period. Because, Baga, if this thing came raging hell like Ebola, huh, do I need to tell you what kind of disaster it would have caused? Who thought that that disaster caused that? Exactly. When you look at this administration, Baga, how inexperienced they are compared to the Ellen administration. Mm -hmm. If these guys were the ones dealing with Ebola, wow, <laughs> half of the population would be sick. Sure. Because I recall we were on the radio during the Ebola crisis. Mm -hmm. We didn't complain about some of the things that we're complaining about today. For example, that healthcare workers, specifically those on the front line, those who are working at the treatment facility, proposed 14 military, to be completely and completely and completely about their salaries not being paid. It is not something I recall us talking about back during the Ebola crisis. I do not recall. But we have to deal with that with these people. And it scares me because this is not how it should be. People shouldn't have to complain about their salaries. People who are working on the front line, they shouldn't be complaining about their salaries not being paid. Yeah. And it's a major problem. Because uh, you can remember the uh, 6,000 contact tracers in, uh, that were... Supposedly. In uh, Jefferson Koji had 6,000 contact tracers. Yeah. Whatever uh, happened, what, whatever came of that? Uh, of course, uh, since they got announced, they haven't taken pay yet. So all of them are sitting home. I have three of them uh, that basically live in my house. And... Since and I, I presume, and most of them are seditions, Waka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, not that, not, 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 not that we have anything against seditions getting hired. If they are qualified, we don't have a problem. But they were hiring the people on the basis, these people on the basis of their partisan loyalty, and not on the basis of their competency or experience in contact tracing. Mm -hmm. And it was a politically motivated thing. You know, they were trying to empower their people. But here's what I'm told though. Some funds were released. Two million dollars were supposedly earmarked for this effort for Jefferson Koji. And it was meant to be used for campaign pur purposes. Okay. Right. So it is possible the man released those funds. But then where are the damn contact tracers? Like you said, you know some of them personally. Do you see them out and about in your communities? Of course not. No, no, no. no. Yeah, no, no. Here's the thing, Waka. Why the hell is it that every single time this government opens its mouth and makes a declaration, it never lives up to it? Mm. 6,000 teachers from, from Nigeria never arrived. <laughs> $500 million from the World Bank in road in, in infrastructure development never arrived. The light goes from uh, yeah. street lights, solar street lights from from EOW Junction all the way to the Robert Highway in the Robert Airport. Mm -hmm. Never installed. Sure. Free electricity during the, the coronavirus crisis. It never you. happened. I beg you. <laughs> Food distribution to the Liberian people as a relief hasn't happened. Okay, so now the food distribution, the uh, the other political party, I'm not talking about the collaborative political party, the other uh, small, small political party just withdrew yesterday. Oh? Yeah. You see that? So they invited not only the CPP, they also invited several other political parties to be a part. So that's what Bokai is saying. They have withdrawn. Mm -hmm. 
Why have they withdrawn? Because they realize that they've been taken for a ride. So, yeah. so I mean, who, who, who the hell is going to sit there, Waka, and let them and, and let them be taken for a joke? Okay, so Costa the the Costa Highway. They got invited by the has it happened? The, part of the process mm -hmm. and they, they they have been locked down the pole because there's no information on how they go about doing their own job as opposition. They they are not being informed what they will be doing there or this is what you'll be doing for today. So it was a charade, but they didn't mean that thing to say let's bring them on board and to really be involved. It was a charade. Knowing George we are, it was a charade. All you meant to do was to create a semblance of transparency and accountability and inclusivity. Let's get them involved so that we shut them up, so that they, they, we make it look like they're actually involved, but involved only in name, but not in reality. So, you know, so, so why is it that everything this guy says never comes to pass? You know, never comes to pass. The coastal highway has not begun. Free tuition at the University of Liberia and all, all public colleges and stuff hasn't happened. Do you know, Blogger, I've been told reliably that teachers and students are actually still paying tuition. Are you aware of that? They are, Costa. I mean, Blogger, listen. But, but Blogger, you have to stop and listen. Yeah, folks, I just want you to pause and ask yourselves. Why is it that every time this idiot opens his mouth or his government makes a promulgation, about something that is a public announcement. Mm -hmm. They make it in this auspicious fashion with all this the pomp and pageantry. It's like a big deal. But these things never come to fruition. When George Weir announced the coastal highway, it was a major deal. Mm -hmm. It was as if he already had the, the money to build the coastal highway. When George Weir announced that uh, uh, 6,000 teachers were coming from Nigeria, he, was, he made that announcement, that pronouncement at the airport. He had just returned from Nigeria. He had a meeting with Muhammadu Buhari and he created the impression that Buhari had agreed to supply Liberia 6,000 qualified teachers. Everybody was like, oh, 6,000 teachers. It didn't happen. They got lied with a straight face. He's a damn pathological liar. He got up and lied. Oh, I just gave $4 million to LEC and LEC will provide free electricity to all during this uh, uh, coronavirus crisis. Another damn lie. He came back from China and said he had struck a resource swap deal that the Chinese would exploit certain Liberian resources, mineral resources, in exchange, the Chinese would give us hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. At the time, I remember I was supporting the government and they made me go all out. Mm -hmm. And I was preaching this thing, oh yeah, resource swap, the Chinese are coming, it's a brilliant idea. The government of uh, Joseph Kabila did it in the, in the, in the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and just where it's doing, it's a wonderful idea. They eat on evil, evil mouth, okay perhaps, eat on an evil mouth, those two deals were singularly the height of George Weah's 419 behavior. Okay. They, at the time I was supporting the government too, Mankil and Tue were telling me, even Jobia, I remember Joby and I had a conversation one day, September the 20th or something, he and, he and I had a conversation on the phone, I was on my way to, to school, and George Weah was going on, talking to me about how such a wonderful, he, he had just secured uh, a, 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 a half a billion dollars from, from Eton. And half a billion dollars, he said, he said, Koza, 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 soon build a road, begin, <laughs> it's over. The second time, clear, it clear, begin, it clear. This is the president lying to me on the phone. I was going to school that day. I said, yeah, 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 Joe, you're trying your best, so out here, the man cajoled me into believing that he was making honest efforts. Ito, failure. Ibo, 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 man, failure. Every single thing this guy said he would do is a lie. The hair plastic company, the, the weed. The, yeah, the, the, wall, the, the fake hair. His wife yeah. was bringing people to make artificial hair mm -hmm. from China. They were building the factory. They even took a number of Liberian girls, about sure. 50 of them, mm -hmm. and shipped them off to China for training at the factory to learn how to plant hair. 
Mm -hmm. To learn how to fix hair, rather, how to prepare, how, how to work in a factory, how to manufacture arti arti artificial hair. They had a, an auspicious ceremony. They said these Liberian girls were going to China for what, three months. Mm -hmm. And they will return to Liberia, and by the time they return, the factory would be constructed or they would begin the construction of the factory while they are studying in China. Yeah. That was ever since last year, Waka. Mm -hmm. No damn hair factory has been built. None will ever be built. We are is a damn liar. Every single thing this guy has promised has been a lie. Mm, the Bali Island. Bali Island. He went there that day, drunk and high like a kite. In that overhaul suit, just like an Air Force pilot mm -hmm. with a boots, sweating profusely. I print the said. Yeah. They put a hair up in the air. They ain't going to people. Just to break ground that day, break swamp, because that place is a swamp and hair. And we come to base city, city. I mean, the guy is so ignorant, so stupid. He just lies and lies and lies. He said Bali Island, they were building a city. Bali city. Yeah. Uh, they read really from the people. The wind is blowing this. The summer swamp is standing there in that swamp with all the crocodile in there. I don't know, they, they ain't eat a foot. I don't know why the crocodile. They said I play a crocodile. They said I play a crocodile. They said I foot. And he's standing in that swamp. He and Samuel to and see Samuel to it. Looking at a chimpanzee. He's standing there and he's reading from the paper. And what the uh, small boy who was living on in in the in the brother uh, well, uh, who used to swim and uh, cut across to play football on the island. Yeah. <laughs> and then today, I never knew that I would be president today. And what the what the who were going to be Sunday yeah. And what the I said, look at the idiot. They use Eugene Dango with Jaja less in reboots. Yeah, Eugene Dango in reboots. You see Samuel Twain looking there like cousin Tim. Eh? Cousin Tim. That they get brought from the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Ayaka. <laughs> Ever seen the top of Bali Island? Where Bali Island, my, my, my people? Oh, what the? What the? What the? It's a freaking lie. Folks, your president is a pathological liar. He lies about everything. What else hasn't he lied about? What else? He said you will feed the people doing the thing. No food. Mm -hmm. Free university, public university, the law. Six thousand teacher, the law. Eton, five hundred million, the law. Even my four hundred million, the law. Two thousand street lights from Monrovia Street to the RIA, the law. No man, because I think all the things are still pending. So we. Have I mean, you, 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 you can't keep lying like like that because you take a bloody pathological liar who enjoys lying. Look, in December twenty fourteen, after this idiot was elected senator in Montreal, I begged Mister Yuri. I said, Bob Ben, let go see this man because my girl called me, my man. Oh man, the cheat, uh, what's up, what's up, what's up? Yo man, so put that Ben Sandy, the cheat out with now. Uh, 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 I leave you, Mr. Like, you so know, kind of reckon, reckon side with the cheat. And so, I said, okay, but man, let, let go see the job we have, man. Yeah. The man has sent up. He oh, won. You, you support that Ben Sandy, I support that Ben Sandy, but Ben Sandy did not win. But fine, let's go and, and shake hands with Joe. We are congratulating him, but man, but then he didn't want to do it. I practically dragged in there. We went to Jovia Hall that Sunday. Mm. Sitting down with Jovia, me, McGill, Mr. Yuri, and Jovia, the four of us, sitting out there in that like, tight little mass box of a house in rehab. He grabs Mr. Yuri's hands. Mr. Yuri wearing this expensive Rolex watch. Mm. He grabs Mr. Yuri's hand and he said, Oh, uh huh, Bobby. They, they watch them, I get them plenty. Yeah. They lie again. <laughs> How does he have plenty of these Rolex watches that cost tens of thousands of dollars and he didn't have a damn car for the campaign? He had to use his friend Blamo's car. Blamo! 
Et c'est même pour toi, il use. Des fois, il est là. Mais c'est lui, il y a le gars, il y a le gars, il y a le Des fois, là, il Il sait, il y a plein de gens qui ont été là. Les gens qui ont été là, ils ont été là. 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 John William must be a total liar. He has to be a total liar. They walk in law. Ah! They walk in law. So I know the man. I know the man too, 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 too good. Total liar. <laughs> the man holding me say, you ain't here. Oh, but hey, they watch it. Oh, man. I got plenty. Yeah, I know you got plenty. You not get caught. Then Mr. Yu asked him, Mr. 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 Yu more boss. Then I hear it, poor. He said, but Joe, uh, when you when you get the car, man, he said, oh, he said, the man never had a car. Look, 2014, the boy never had a car. So Mr. He, he said, he got plenty of the roller watches. So Mr. Mr. Yu said, but so he had one, he had one Acura, one small gray Acura was packing in yeah, that that day, that the car he was using, a small. SUV, but the mid size SUV, soft, not the full size. So, Mr. 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 said, I woke up there. He said, Oh, that one of my men car, man, you know, they they, they send it, they, they will get our car after we get inducted. Huh? They will get their car after he gets inducted. Mm -hmm. In January 2015, I tell the game, won't up the Mitsubishi. That means that, that Mitsubishi, well, I can't be out me, I can't drive in that, in that, in ride in that car. This is a man who has plenty of Rolex watches. But he did, he did not have a car. Then he said, so you talk about the watch of you say when you get car man. Mm. He said, oh, 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 uh, uh Papa, you know, after they do the induction ceremony, they'll get our car. Huh? This is the man today, today. He barely managed all over the place. He never had car. He said, yo, you're looking at me. You're looking at me. He said, hey, God, you're right. Because it's a big lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big lie. 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 This is the man we have. We have a total liar as president of the republic. <laughs> total liar. As president of the republic. He lies about every, everything. I can't wait for the CPP to whoop this bugger's behind. Like a pop. P-U-L-P. Who will beat this ball like a pop into a pepper. In 2023, we will begin by 2020. They say the elections are slated to be held in the, on December 8th. That's what I'm told. That's what I'm told. But this is serious. The ball lies too damn much. You're listening to the Costa Show on uh, Roots Radio, on, on, on online, on Facebook, and multiple and, and a number of other platforms. I'm Henry Costa. Boaka is in Monrovia. Today is the 5th of June two, 2020. Today is the birthday of. Um, Big brother, Nehemiah Yuma Kamanda. Nehemiah Yuma Kamanda in Australia. Today's your birthday. You are a Dahav, supporter of the Costa Show, and a member of the COP. I want to say happy, happy birthday to you as you celebrate your birthday today. Uh, Evans Yuma, one of my longest supporters. Uh, Evans, I want to say happy birthday to you. Evans Yuma is a young entrepreneur, hard working young man. Uh, Mr. Abraham T. Snatter Sr., your darling wife. Uh, this is the Musu Snatter would like me to do this for you as a happy birthday treat. It is also your anniversary. Congratulations to both of you on your anniversary and happy birthday to you, Abraham T. Snatter Senior. We're going to go to the phone lines and take some calls. Today is the day we say, have your say. Call in, say what you want to say, of course, is have your say. That's what it is. I remember my favorite BBC program and what I learned quite a lot from, particularly my presentation skills. Uh, as a talk show host, was from a, a BBC program called Word Have Your Say. It used to be presented uh, by a guy called Ross Atkins of the BBC. And I used to love that program, Word Have Your Say. It used to come out as, uh, at, uh, at, at, at 1800 hours GMT, Word Have Your Say. Wonderful, wonderful guy, great, great presenter. And I learned quite a bit from Ross Atkins, formerly a DJ, a disc jockey, uh, became a journalist and he was fantastic at it. We're gonna go to the phone lines, take some calls there, of course. Two days from now, we commemorate the first anniversary of the most historic, well, in terms of 
peaceful assembly in the history of Liberia. Even, even the gurus, even the trailblazers, even the people who came before us in this particular advocacy business, in this particular peaceful protestation business, the likes of uh, uh, the former chair of the NEC, uh, the veteran, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, Gene Fromoya and, 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 and the veteran Dustin Wolokoli, all those senior comrades, uh, uh, Sam Jackson and the, and, the, and the others, they all would agree with us that June 7 was indeed the greatest peaceful protest in the history of the country. And, 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 and so, and, and, and one way or the other, uh, lots of people were involved and we sought the advice and, and consulted with some of these people and, and, and to pull that thing off. And we're all very proud of what we, together, the people of Liberia accomplished on June 7, 2019. June 7, 2019 was so historic to the extent that the international uh, media descended on Liberia that we, the people, were recognized as the uh, 33rd most influential African on the continent, out of a pool of 50. It was a remarkable feat, made possible only by what we did on June 7th and on June 6th. We're going to go to the phone, and on January 6th, 2020. We're going to go to the phone lines and take some calls. Our website is, uh, yesterday I could not unfortunately really uh, join the conversation. The guys were doing the last um, demonstration. A virtual demonstration. Uh, the web designer and our brother Aaron Nella on the on the, on the other end, uh, and 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 uh, I don't I don't know what I should call our web designer's name. I don't know what I'm not going to do that. But fantastic guy has done a great job for us. And uh, Aaron is also definitely I can call Aaron Aaron Nella's name. Aaron is a fantastic guy too. He's been I mean he's been ahead of this thing yet. Yeah. You know working with. Uh, 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 his, 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 his buddy there and they've built this wonderful, wonderful website for us, which we intend it looks like it is certain that we're going to launch this site on the same day that we commemorate the first anniversary of June 7. Uh, everything seems to be a go and uh, yesterday Stephen Johnson was on the thing with them. I could not really be there because I was so busy trying to uh, I had just gone and, 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 and gotten myself a new tele television. It's my new toy. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> and so I was trying to set up some things. Uh, my friend Helmut Peters came down to help me. So I didn't really get to uh, join join them. But the website is, 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 is good to go. And we're going to put it up. Uh, we, we, we're going to launch this site. I think everything is set uh, to be launched on Sunday, the 7th of, uh, of, of June 2020. Let's go to the phone lines, walk out and take some calls there. You're listening to the nation's premier platform where we discuss the issues that matter. I'm Henry Costa, walk out, Kamara, it's in Liberia. This is a platform where we discuss the issues that matter. We don't mince our words, we don't speak in nuances. Cat never has our thumb or never catches or holds out our thumb. Let's go to the lines. Okay, so it's have your say this morning. Yeah, what do you have on mind? Call us up on 0770. 102 102 102 once again 0770 624171. Uh, so those are the numbers that you can. And, and uh, I ate something. We, we're going to defer it a little bit. We're going to talk to Minipake Dumoy. Minipake Dumoy is the vice chair for administration of the COP. He's the acting chairman on the ground in Liberia. And uh, he is exploring the possibility of a run for the Senate in Bonn County, his county of nativity. And so we're going to be speaking to him. He's currently in Bonn County. Mini Parker Dumont is exploring. He is exploring the possibility of a Senate run in Bonn County in 2020. So we're going to be speaking to Mr. Mini Parker Dumont on the line just to give us a feel of what's happening on the ground since he's, since he's been in Bonn County for at least two weeks now. Uh, just going from place to place, from, from, 
from Palala to Batala and to parts of Banga and all that kind of stuff, setting up office there and all. So let's go to the phone lines and take some calls then, okay? Yeah, 0770 and the lines that you can call this one or zero triple five one or two one or two. So yeah, uh, the calls you have to call this morning is have your say. So uh, if you have a brand new and after after minute park at Des Moines, we will speak with Mr. Samuel Polyphius Jackson, uh, Liberia's in my opinion one of Liberia's uh, clearly not just my opinion is 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 um, evidential. Samuel Jackson is by far one of Liberia's brightest leading minds, economic minds uh, uh, in the country, one of the most knowledgeable people I know. And we will we'll be speaking to him uh, a few weeks ago. Samuel Jackson, at 67, I believe, that's Sam Jackson's age, 67 or 69, at 67, yes, 67, Samuel Jackson has gotten, uh, uh, has gained a mission into one of the most prestigious schools in the world. Uh, it is the London School of Economics in London, the United Kingdom, at his age. And uh, of course, he's got, uh, he's got a master's from Pace University. He's got uh, many, many decades of professional work experience in the banking sector in the United States. He was vice president of a bank, one of the youngest, uh, back in New York, I believe. And uh, he's worked uh, in, in many sectors, uh, public and private, and Sam Jackson, all that experience under, under his belt, having clocked six to seven years of age, has gained admission, having defeated cancer, prostrate cancer, something he's extraordinarily proud and grateful to God for, and uh, he's decided to go back to school at six to seven to get another master's, this time at a prestigious university, the equivalent of, say, uh, Brown University or Cornell University or Stanford University, you know, you know, you know, uh, you know London School of Economics is definitely an Ivy League school when compared to other Ivy League schools here in the United States in the UK. So we we'll speak with Sam Jackson after we we'll speak with Minnie Pocket tomorrow. Perhaps you should make contact with Minnie Pocket tomorrow now. All right, so let me see if I can uh, connect Minnie Pocket tomorrow. On this line quickly, he's like Costa said, he's in Bond County. Uh, but you can stick to your calls coming in 0770 uh, as we try to uh, make contact with uh, Mr. Dumoy uh, there quickly this morning. Oh, yeah, so mm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a slow fry, Friday morning, apparently. You know, people are just chilling. Let's take somebody this morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Hello? Boy, you have to make sure he's loud enough, please. Okay. 
Okay, so he's suggesting another number to call him. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so let me take it first thing as I'm trying to get in contact with him. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah, welcome. You're doing calling from? I'm a team, but I'm calling from John Hugo. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, what I'm on my this morning, I want to tell Costa that I will now vote for the CPP. Okay. Because mm. there are so many measures in the government. Mm. You know, the party shut down for certain illegally. Mm. And the United States for a death that are facing that time. So they, they are all around pretending like they love culture. And today we have to see Luther in the state of broad daylight. Nothing has been done. And tomorrow is to be state power. And culture that will set this down this very CPP today. Some of them will go against him and they will lose the decision and see what it is. Call the name of the respecting your call, please. So for me, I will it. keep my phone to that. The day that you call that will be there for the political party. Mm. I will get my vote that I will not vote for any having to get their own paper and fill up. Thank you. Let me say something to the brother, even after he leaves the line. Mm -hmm. My brother, first of all, I want to thank you for your support and for your faith and confidence in me. I'm deeply honored and humbled by it. But why I may not be able to run for president in 2023, it would be selfish of me to not try to convince you to vote for whoever we reach to terms with and put forward and beg you to support. It would be selfish of me to not try to do that for the good of the country. Yes, I have no guarantee 100% that whoever I put forward, I as an individual, and ask you to vote for, there will be no guarantee that that person would do, would, would, would lead the way I would want to lead the country. There is no way that I see anyone who can do exactly the things that I want to see done. It is the same way that there is no way I will do exactly the things that that person will do. Versa versa. But you must vote. When I come to you, my dear brother, and there are many of you out there who tell me, because we're not going to vote for anybody, we're going to wait until the day you run. No, don't do that. When I come to you in 2023 and ask you to vote for John Brown as president, before I do that, I will have extracted a solid commitment. I will have, I will have examined, I will have reached a solid understanding, a solid commitment with John Brown in your behalf and on your behalf. And so, my brother, I want you to call back if you can, Boakai. If you can call back. Mm. Tell me that you will change your mind and you will vote for a presidential candidate when I present one to you. So if you say it's about me, Costa, that's why I say I. Because he says his confidence is only in Costa. Sure. So to you and everyone who holds that view, please, this is not about Costa. It is about the country. We will get the candidate of the CPP to sign on to our social contract. Whoever that person is, if they don't sign the social contract with you, and thousands of Liberians, because we'll go around and solicit signatures. If they don't sign our social contract, we will not support them. But I have no reason to doubt that they will sign it because they need our support. Mm. So I say to you, my dear brother, thank you for your confidence. Let us see if it is him. Uh, somebody is calling again. Hello. But we need you to support. Stephen, but now they won't call him back. Stephen. Yes. You believe in me, right? And I want to show support. I didn't show up for him. I will do two more press of the standard. Now, Stevie, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the support and sacrifice. So, Stevie, I'm sure you heard what I said. You were going to change your mind, right? 
and you're going to support whoever will put forward for president, right? I understand, Stephen, but if I am dead, standing right next to that person, and, and having gotten them to commit to our social con contract, being assured of playing a key role after they come to power, would you support that person because you believe in me and you trust me? Would you support that person for president? I understand, I understand, I understand. Okay, my brother Stephen, thank you very much. I, I, I know I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you are considering it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you for your support. Uh, let's take another caller. Do we have Mr. Tumoy? Yeah, let's see if we can join him now quickly on this line. Uh, Mr. Manifaka Dumoy. Amy, so. Amy Ryder, good, good morning. One of my biggest supporters. Morning, morning, Amy. Uh, let's take uh, Mr. Dumoy if we have him. Yeah, I'm listening of course to him now. So, uh, okay, so we now have Mr. Manifaka Dumoy live on the line with us. Mr. Dumoy, good morning and welcome to the Costa Show. What? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, uh, welcome to the Costa Show. This is Bwaka. Yeah, Bwaka, thanks for having me. Okay. Uh, let's see what I'm doing with Yemen. Tomoy, can you hear me? This is Costa. Hello, and clear. Very, very good. What part of Bone County are you specifically? Where are you calling from right now? Beautiful, beautiful. Now tell us, what sort of vibe have you been getting since your arrival in the heart of the country? Literally, the heart of Liberia, Bong County, our beautiful Bong County. What sort of vibe are you getting? I see lots of exciting photo photographs depicting massive reception and positive reaction from the folks there. But you tell us, you are the one experiencing this. Share with us your experience. I saw, I saw you painting. I can't tell the last time you painted. I saw you painting your, your, your office. Wonderful. with the people, community engagement, right, right across Bone, Bone County. Uh, does this exploration, this exploration that you have embarked upon, does it seem like a viable thing? Should we expect a demoy for, for Senate in, in December? Thank you. 
That is wonderful. Now, Bonk County is certainly not far from Mount Toronto, and to follow the events in Mount Toronto, as you, as you said, they are impressed with Dillon's performance in the Senate, and they want, you know, a more similar, you know, performance there. They want more of that, not less. And so I, I can appreciate why they came on having a Des Moines in the Senate to join up and pair up with Dillon to continue to fight there. And so that, that is very, very good, good news. Now, uh, what is the standing? What is the favorability of the current president and the current government in Bonn County? How 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 are they looking like in Bonn County? Very low, very low. I mean, I have a talk group uh, meeting where I was very critical of the president, very scathing. It was very surprising that I didn't see one disagreement or a pushback on the president's record. Um, I think it's easier to rock bottom. Hmm. But how could they have fallen out of favor so, so I mean, so early on into the administration with the people of Bonn County? The women that voted for them in the last election. That just shows the people of Bonn County are conscious. They must be following the issues. They must be following the issues. That's that's wonderful. Wonderful. Now tell me, what are the challenges? What what what, what exactly are the issues? Do do they feel in Bonn County? that they are being represented in the legislature in a way that satisfies them. Constructive, positive agitation. Wonderful. That is the kind of progressive change we need. Now, Mr. Mr. Des Moines, Bonn County is your hometown, and no doubt uh, your family has quarters there, Des Moines Quarter, and uh, so you are well at home. And do you miss Monrovia? Oh, no. <laughs> That is wonderful, Joy. We're, we're going to be in touch with you. It's good. Thank you for giving us a temperature check of what's happening in Baum County. You're having an exhilarating experience there. Keep at it. Keep keep pushing and we've got your back. Let's see how this exploration, which is going pretty, pretty well, is going to end. Thank you very much. Any last nice words? Thank you very much, Mr. Dumoy. Thank you very much, folks. That is Mr. Mini Packet Dumoy. Mini Packet Dumoy. Impele, it means, Mini Packet means something's about to happen. Mini Packet Dumoy. Mini Packet Dumoy. Dumoy means they will say it. Dumoy, they will say it. Mini Packet Dumoy. Yes. Something is about to happen. They say it. They will say it. Mini Packet Dumoy. 
So Milwaukee boy is in Bond County and he's on an exploration. He is looking to run for Senate in December 2020 to represent the wonderful people of Bond County. Nganuange de ka Bond County ka long mini pake e mwala ge e li Senate shu a ge e hakate nwang de pona uh, yeah, 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 look, but uh, the pele I can speak that pele. Uh, look, when we left the village all those years ago, uh, you gotta give me credit. Begin. I, I speak, speak, speak my dingo, speak my dingo now. The move, Nick, my fair, but the packet, I think, but you love me, speak my dingo, a bonga, the guy, a lot of my dingo people. So, bonga, they belongs to pele, my dingo. Uh, I think several other tribes. So yeah. I think Mandingo is a second tribe in Bon in, in bon Kante. So speak some Mandingo to the Bon Kante Mandingo people. Okay, now more with Bon Kante. Manipake has been like a senator. Eh, half hour ko I be I die I vote ke amba I get senator. You got me. Wallahi, I was there as a senator there. I kept up with you. But you got to get that thing up. Okay, so you see, I like my dingo. Uh, I like the sound of my dingo. I just like the way my dingo people can talk. Uh, but when, when I'm speaking in my dingo, they're not the way the my dingo that I love to hear. Yeah, you know, the, one, the my dingo that I grew up listening to when people speaking, uh, you know, when I see my dingo people speaking my dingo, my jaws can get dropped. But, <laughs> yeah. But you know, let me tell you something about my dingo people too. One thing, let me invoke my dingo people small. When, when my dingo make call, on the phone. Hmm? Mm -hmm. My man, my nigga make it talk alone. <laughs> Nancy, yeah, uh, can I see? Yeah. They will ask for the costume, the pipe, yes. the cheering in, the everybody, one by one, they will not ask for the cheering in, they will ask for, how is John? Hey, John, all right, okay, fine. How is how, how is Paul? Paul, all right, okay. My nigga make it talk on the, on the phone. The cell phone company mm -hmm. love my nigga people also, because my, my nigga people can use plenty of data, plenty of credit. <laughs> My name is Hey, let's see. Come on, see. He never heard that. Never heard. You know what? They will ask for everything to the door. Then they will come. Okay, why are they going to ask for it two, two times? Tell me now. Why are they going to ask for it two times? No, you know that it asking twice, Costa. It's like um, <laughs> asking for your siblings, your relatives, your whatsoever. Uh, so just, yeah, but you can ask for what for one thing twice. <laughs> Let's go to the full line and drink some calls. Eh? <laughs> Alright, well, we're going to talk to old man Sam Jackson. Sam Jackson will be calling in very shortly and we'll speak to him uh, about his admission, which is a wonderful, wonderful feat. Uh, uh, and his, uh, his admission into the prestigious uh, uh, London School of Economics. I know my father went to London School of e Economics. Yes. Uh, Henry, uh, uh, I mean, Pedro Costa Sr went to London School of Economics. My father was an accountant. He worked at Maserati Group of Companies. As an accountant, he also worked at LEC, the Library Electricity Corporation. When, when, when my father worked at, at, at Maserati Group of Companies, Stephen Tauber brought him to work there. Yes, many of you did not know this. As a matter of fact, Steve Tauber Jr., uh, a guy in touch with me the other day until he had a photograph of my father along with a British guy who ran Maserati Group of Companies uh, Maserata group of, group of companies and Steve Tobin. My father worked at Maserata Group of Companies as an accountant. I think he was their chief accountant. They say he was a no-nonsense guy. Yes, my father went to London School of Economics. Sam Jackson, you did not know that? I just told you. Let's go to the phone line, take some calls, and we're going to connect with Samuel Pol yep. Polyfuse Jackson shortly. If I am sending you credit this morning for speaking real, my dingo, send me your phone number, let me send you 20 data. Yes, sir. Good. Now, tell Pagomo 
Now he said, "Send me back home. No matter what he said, he told me that I'm crazy right now for speaking. We are my nigga. Now I can't understand my nigga. Fuck out speaking, man." Wonderful. Now send me uh Pagumu Kamara's number. Let me send him twenty dollar credit for speaking real Mandingo. Mama, you might you know you know what sort of credit, mama. You think I know how who walk and send you send you credit again? <laughs> send me send me the number, please. Let me let me let me send it. It's for the twenty dollar credit again. Okay. Okay. So, then, then we're gonna connect with Sam Jackson. Uh take one more call while you're doing that and I'm gonna call Sam Jackson up. Mm? Mm-hmm. And send me Pagumo's number. Okay, so uh, I will say Pagumo's number. Shut up. Let's say Martina, uh, Martina Konate uh, mm-hmm. on this line. No, oh, Martina, I'm trying to connect you. Uh, quickly, Martina, I've been trying to call you. I don't know, Martina, you can speak to Mandingo. Uh, let me connect her on this line. Martina, good morning and welcome to the show. No, but I have a good morning. Oh, come on. I'm
Samuel Polyphius Jackson. How you doing, Henry? The only Basel man with a Greek name, Polyphius. <laughs> Tell him good morning. Good morning, Henry. Henry, I've, I've been working all night as usual, you know, on doing things, you know, and I'm just very, very excited. Wonderful. In, in September, and thank you for all of the support. You know, I'm, I'm inspired by you. I'm also. So am I. So am I by you, Sam. As yeah. I am by you. As yeah. I am. Now, Sam, I, I, I want to say congratulations to you. I, I could not say congratulations enough on your very remarkable feat. It is extremely inspiring, and lots of people share that, uh, that sentiment with me, what you've done. Uh, you are a well-accomplished, a consummate, consummate achiever. You've achieved quite a lot. Uh, in your 20s, you were vice president of a bank. Which bank was that? Was it uh, Chase Manhattan or yeah, Manhattan Chase Manhattan Bank? Exactly, in New York. And you're going to talk, talk, talk to us a little bit about that and uh, about your when you came to the United States as a young man back in the 70s and, uh, and, and, and your accomplishment. And yet you've chosen to go back to school at 67. That's quite remarkable. After having defeated cancer. Now you have a comfortable life. You have a wonderful home. I've been to your home in Covington, Georgia. Wonderful family. Beautiful home. Uh, living there. The typical American life. And here you are, retired with American healthcare, Medicare and all. And, uh, you know, access to medical treatment at the v any VA hospital. And you want to go back to college, to London School of Economics. What is the drive? Why are you doing this, eh? Well, you know, Henry, I, I plan to do more writing, you know, uh, to, uh, I want to be a, a global writer. Mm -hmm. and be, be, to, to be a global writer, I went to schools that were that way. Okay, then, good school, Pace University, Providence College, Johnson and Lewis University, and then um, American Institute of Banking, you know? But if I'm going to start writing like you know, global books, like right now I'm doing a book that is coming out in a couple of weeks on the coronavirus pandemic, um, look at the economic fallout, but I'm deciphering the uh, inequalities and vulnerabilities that this disease is exposing, you know, in mm -hmm. terms of uh, income inequality of black people, the health problems of black people, the, the, uh, the divergence between race and poor nations. So if I'm going to start writing books like that, you know, it, it, will, it will be good to have the uh, LSE credential, you know, on my CV to get a lot of people to take a, you know, very good look at my book. So, so I'm doing it for a very, very selfish reason. The other reason I'm doing it, I'm basically just bored and I have nothing to do here. Uh, I'm retired. I get a little small pension every month. Um, it, 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 it's, not, it's not enough money for me to ball and plow all over the world, but I can eat my quicker oats. And I can eat my little uh, spinach or fufu, you know, and, I, and I'm fine. So, but I, but, I, but I wanted to challenge myself and write more global books, you know, and that's the reason why I'm going to the London School of Economics so I can get people to take a, you know, solid look at me when, when I write a book and I have an LSE imprimatur on that book. Uh, many people are going to buy the book, and that's, that's, that's the primary reason. But also because I'm bored and I just want to uh, push myself as hard as I can. And hopefully, if we have a with effective government in Liberia um, after 2023, um, if, I'm, if I'm staying healthy, I can look at the possibility of maybe opening up an investment bank in Liberia and, and driving some investments to Liberia. And you know, when I'm in London, of course, all of the networking that I'm going to be doing with the you know the the Arab princes and the you know the the potentates around the world to go to LSE, so I will try to you know, do some networking there. So those are some of the reasons why I decided to go back to school. Okay, Sam, that is wonderful. Uh, you know, it's a wonderful, wonderful feat, what it is you're trying to do. Uh, again, we say con con congratulations on that. Uh, yeah. So one, one of the things I want to find out from you is, 
Are you going to literally move over to London for the duration of this master's program? And what exactly are you going to be studying? Okay, well, okay. Um, it, is a, it is an executive program. It is designed for people who are already accomplished, people who already have a graduate education, and people who have published, people, somebody who really, I mean, really does seem need to go through the, the grab of a, re, of a regular graduate work, but that's so, you know, uh, you, can you hear me? Loud and clear, Sam. Loud and clear. Yeah, okay. yeah so basically, I want to do uh, MFC in economics with a concentration in urban planning and the sustainable development. You know, I don't know if you remember him, I was in the uh, high-level panel, and we produced the uh, sustainable development goals, which is the 17 goals that guide development in the world. And, you know, I have an MBA, and I also have a diploma in international economics, and I don't have a pure development degree. So I also want to do some consulting, too. And if I want to do some global consulting in sustainable development goals, I need to have a credential that will match my experience and my output. So <clears throat> um, it, it, it is very sad for a country like Liberia that does not mainstream its uh, development agenda to achieve the sustainable development goals. Because you know, you know uh, in in 2015 the uh, MDGs expired, the uh, eight goals of the MDGs. So we got together for two years from 2012 to 2014 and put together the sustainable development goals. If you look at the uh, 17 symbols of the sustainable development goals, if you see the bowl of rice. You know, that is with the heat coming up, that that's a symbol I suggested. My uh, friends from the Brooklyn Institution and from the S, from the OGI, and other global economists, they were using wheat for the eradication of hunger. So I said, no, most of the globe eat rice. He said, ah, okay, no. So, so, so the, and, and the so I don't get nothing. So, 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 and a few other symbols. So I have, I did a lot of work on that. I spent two years of my life traveling around the world, going to, uh, Indonesia, going to going to London, going to Brazil, going to Mexico, consulting with uh, civil society groups all over the world, and helping to put together something called the Common Africa Position on the post 2015 development agenda. And we completed that. Uh, you know, Dr. Dukle uh, carried it further. He went further than, than I did because at that time I had fit, I had fallen out with Ellen Johnson Salim, and she didn't want me anywhere near her because I was criticizing her on some of the corruption and some of the the egregious acts of uh, misfeasance and malfeasance that was going on. And so basically she abuted me out. But I mean I had you know, I had two solid years of working with uh, uh, Dr. Hami Karaz, who is a fellow at the Brooklyn Institution, who was the lead writer. I like to consider myself a co-lead writer for the uh, global uh, post-2015 development agenda that produced these sustainable development goals. And you know, sometimes I, you know, I, I look at, I look at Liberians, they always ask me, what have you really, you know, contributed to the country? I mean, how do you ask somebody who produced a global development agenda, worked two years of his life, worked with people like uh, uh, Dr. Abishi Banerjee, the, the Nobel laureate for economics, okay, I worked together with him, I worked together with people like uh, Dr. Paul Collier. I worked with Jeffrey Sachs. Yeah, worked the bottom billion guy. I met Paul yeah, Collier. Yeah. Yeah. And Ongozi Nkwala, former Minister of Finance of Nigeria. I worked with uh, the guy who was the Clinton's uh, chief of staff, uh, Mr. Podesta. He was on there. You know, and John, John Podesta? <laughs> Yeah, 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 no, no, uh, John Podesta. John Podesta was a, one of the uh, panelists on the, on, on the high level panel that produced the SDGs. So he was uh, representing the United States mostly on the sustainable development goals, development of that. And, and, and we worked together very, very harmoniously. And all of those people, they were like, really surprised I didn't have a PhD, you know? So I, so I told myself, look, I'm an investment banker, uh, I fell into development economics. Uh, Killed by mistake, Henry was in like 2008, 2009, the global financial crisis. A, a liberal economist came from the uh, ILO and the government of Liberia and the uh, UNDP 
went up and Congress would work with him to make a determination on the uh, impact of the global financial crisis in the Latin economy. And I wound up writing a paper and they were like impressed. They said, well, you're not appealing to Congress. How come you were able to do that? I said, because if you work in investment banking and you consult with uh, companies, you, 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 you do a lot of government bonds, you do a lot of social social analysis, the economic rate of return, the social rate of return, you do like shadow pricing, and all of the kind of metrics behind uh, benefiting the human condition is, 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 is very close to the development economic, but just that we do a more investment approach and investment approach to, to development. When you guys, you know, you guys do, you are all NGOs, you, you're, you're fat and happy with what you get, but we have to produce, we have to do a budget, we have to reset the government. You know, anyway, there's a whole international system with the uh, development economies, and they don't really produce anything. I mean, they write a lot of papers, but it's the guys that produce the money and the finance and investment. Those are the ones that create the jobs and improve the lives of people. And that's the, that's the background I came from. And but my passion here was it has been all my life because of my political background, my social activism has been about people. So falling into development economic was a very, 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 very what, would, what would I say? It was just like a seamless effort falling into development economics. All right, Sam. Thank you very, very much. Uh, you're listening to the Costa Show. Yeah, I'm going to say something quickly before I, before I go. I, no, I, no, I, you're, I, not, you're, not, you're not you're not going, not going just yet. <laughs> I, I'm going to talk about him and you certainly call him. About, you know, Henry, I used to have so much respect for this guy. You know, in uh, in the year 2000, uh, Mr. Weir came with a football team to South Africa when I was working in South Africa, and my wife happened to, to arrive in South Africa the same day. We went to the football game, and I was so excited to see this young man that I've been put on the map. And I went to his room, I you know, greeted him, and we that particular night we went, we went to a nightclub at a good time. And subsequently, so when he became president, even though like you know, uh, I did not support him in the, in the, in the first round, the second round, just like you Henry, so look, let's put our arms around him, let's push him, and let's see if we can really you know make Liberia a better place. But Henry, the five months I spent in Liberia, I discovered that all of them, the Wea, the Twe, the McGill, and the rest of them, especially those I mean those, those three guys. They only are interested in how much money they can take, when they can take it, the pleasure that they have. I mean, they don't have any strategic plan. Look at the National Economic Dialogue. We spent three months of our lives putting together what could, could have been a platform for development for, for Liberia. The international system spent 250000 that's a quarter million dollars, for a three-day conference. And Henry is going through 10 months. Not one item of the 70 recommendations has been impl implemented. So sad. It, it's so sad. And you know, if you talk about him being a liar, you know, and, and I don't really to come to think about it. I look at the Eto deal, I look at the Boma deal, I look at the resource swap deal, I look at the coastal highway, I look at the university free tuition. You know, Henry, one of my friends, is working on the team that is just beginning to enumerate, to enumerate the houses, to enumerate the houses to start what? Distributing the rights. They're just doing the enumeration. They're doing the enumeration, I think, in three or four counties. That's Montserrado, Madidi, that's, I think, I believe, Nima, and then they're jumping over all the other counties and going all the way to Grand Cru. To Grand Cru. Yeah, Henry, you know, so you know, the thing is like, I mean, Grand Cru doesn't have a problem with the uh, coronavirus, you know? So this guy is charging, you know, and then Henry, and I will tell you a little secret. Uh, over the last eight or nine days, we've been doing some kind of informal polling all over the 15 counties in Liberia. Henry, you'll be shocked. This is scientific with the, the margin of error, five to seven percent. This and, and I and I have the raw data that I will, I will discuss with you. This man has gotten so unpopular 
The number one problem in the country is hunger. The number two problem is insecurity. The number three, the, the school system have gotten worse. And the young women in the country especially, they are so desperate to, they, 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 they're telling our, the people who do the service, they're telling them that they haven't had this kind of hard time in decades in that country. And this is sad. This is sad. There's no war. There is no civil strife. There's nothing. This is what we call normal days. And they're, and they're suffering that I have my poor little social security income for people who I'm connected to. Henry, I haven't seen such desperation in this country in a very, very, very long time, you know? And that's very disappointing, you know? And my fear, Henry, for this, for, for us, he cannot win another election. No, he cannot. Because, and because he cannot win another election, because he has to stay in power, he has to stay in power for fear if he surrender power, the consequences. So he's going to try to maintain power. But say, well, we're not going to let him maintain power when he cannot win. Yeah, but I'm saying, but 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 I, but I know he in love now the way he's been acting as as president. I know that he's crazy enough to want to maintain himself in power even after he loses, and that's my fear. Because I don't want us, not us, like you and me, Henry, but I'm talking about other young radicals. They're more radical than you and I. They speak to me every day. They, and they, they, they'll, they, they're so concerned about what's going to happen. Because these, these kids, like in their 30s and 40s, they want some stability in their lives. They want to self-actualize. And so we are is obstructing them. This, I mean, you, 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 when you talk to people, uh, in, in Finland, who are chemical engineers, people in Norway, people in Australia, people all over. Young guys, like in your generation, Henry, your generation is probably the most educated generation of Iberians ever and the most productive. And you guys are in your most productive years. You should be in Liberia. You should be in Liberia doing things, doing projects, earning an income, building businesses, and doing things, I mean, outside of the government. But unfortunately, Mr. Weir has obstructed the possibility. A lot of young women, Henry, when you were in your, your, a little problem with your lesser party in, 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 in Sierra Leone. The political more than more than a problem. <laughs> they call me, they call me, they cry to me, you know? They say, what did, what did he do, lesser passé, for them to be going after this young man like this, this guy who is a symbol of the resistance. I mean, and him and these and these people, and Mr. Weir is not careful, and he tries to cheat. I'm afraid that these people are going to do something that it, it, it will really upset the peace in our country. So I want to appeal to him, Henry, and the, the last thing before I go. Henry, besides those three guys, 12, McGill, and Mr. Weir, most of the guys in the CDC, I heard you mention that today. We have to reach out to them because they are hurting just as much as you and I are hurting. They're hurting, Henry. They're hurting. But because they're in Liberia and most of them don't have any options that you and I do, they cannot voice it out. But Henry, they're discussing among themselves what their plans are post we are. They are planning a post George Weir dispensation even as we speak now. And that's the scary part. His own people, they speak to me in touch tones. They in my in my in my inbox on a, on a regular basis, Henry. They're very, very concerned. And when Henry, you all have to reach out to these, do I mean, it very quietly, reach out to them, follow up and um, stretch your arms, then we say that if it's possible, when we get not not if or when the opposition takes power as as it is very clearly it will. You have to reach out to some of these young men. Because for 12 years, they suffer in the wilderness. They, they sacrifice a lot. And they, and they take power. You know how power is sweet in, in Africa. And these guys, that just, they smell it, but they're not tasting this power. It's only just we have Simon 12 and McGill. And those three guys, I mean, that's mean. That's cruel. That's, that's really, that is, it's so inhumane, you know? And I mean, and Henry, you and I talk to the same people, some of them reach out to you, Henry. We must reach out to them. We, we, we 
should it destroy the friendship of the of the amity between 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 those guys and us because they, they support CDC verbally and I can say they support it verbally or in their hearts they don't support CDC. Thank you very much, Sam Jackson. We wish you best of luck. Looking forward to your uh, 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 upcoming book, your next book, and your uh, London School of Economics experience. And we enjoy watching your podcast. Very informative, very, very uh, educative. And uh, have yourself a wonderful time, a wonderful weekend, and uh, be, be, be safe. Thank you very much, Henry. And check your email, okay? Check your email. Yeah, I did see it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sam. All right. All right, folks, there you have it. That's Samuel Polyphius Jackson. Uh, he has been our guest briefly this morning after many pack at the Moy. We're going to go to the phone lines. We've got, we've got 13 more minutes to go. We're going to go to the phone lines and take some calls. You're listening to the Calls to Show, Boakai and myself here this morning on the nation's premier platform, doing what we love to do, doing what we do best. Uh, let's go back to the lines there and take some calls. All right, 0770 are the phone lines that you can call, and you'll be live on the uh, Oscar show this morning. Uh, hey, hey, here, yeah, okay, take that off. Uh, good morning, okay. Good morning, Ellen Pedro Cosa. My name is Amar M. Kamara. I do talk as an expert. Welcome. Uh, Brother, I want to speak to my people, my people this morning, or to Bangla with from Kazi. Are you with me? Where? Good. Uh, my name is Dwayne Amakama. My small place, I have a lot of money. Hmm. I have a CPTC game. I have a lot of money. I have a lot of money. So don't there I don't. I can move quick to get. Where is Munai? I do I do not I do not I do not I do not I do I do not 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 and second, let me just speak that in English, as to what the social contract. Second, the social contract will be an oath between the CTP and that of the Latin people. If the CTP does not expect the signatures and agree upon the social contract, that we will go on the floor before them, that I can show to you, whenever you go to the floor, we will go and we will not support the CTP. Okay. And we will be very clear. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Well, I have no doubt that a CPP candidate for president will commit to the CPP. I mean, to the social contract with the Liberian people. No doubt whatsoever. And we've made it clear, and we're very clear on that, that we will not budge. The social contract will be signed. Period. Uh, you know, we're going to take some more calls. It's uh, 10 minutes before the show is up. I want to say again, uh, happy birthday to Mr. Ibrahim T. Snatter Sr. Uh, today's a birthday from your wife, Musa Snatter. And today's also your both uh, your anniversary, the both of you. Uh, happy anniversary. And uh, Evans Yuma, happy birthday today. Too. And uh, Tina Brooks, COP Europe chapter, happy birthday, Tina. One of our longest, uh, strongest supporters, uh, Dave Allen. He is a Europe coordinator of the COP. Dave, your birthday is tomorrow. Uh, Nehemiah Yuma Kamanda, COP uh, slash Henry Costa supporter there in Australia. Happy birthday to you today. Let's go back to the phone lines. Let's take some more calls there. I think this person, good morning. Yeah, you yeah, want Joseph, welcome. Joseph, good morning, my brother. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, my brother. Good morning, 
Let's take some more calls. As we said, Friday, this is uh, have your say. Uh, whatever it is that's on your mind, let's speak to it. As we told you the other day, Junior Cole, the young man who raped, well, some would say allegedly, but Junior Cole has not denied it, who raped on multiple occasions, a nine-year-old boy has been uh, indicted and is currently being held on remand, R-E-M-A-N-D. He's been held on remand at the Monroeville Central Prison awaiting trial. Uh, that's Junior Cole. He ripped the nine-year-old kid we told you about some time ago. He's at South Beach where he should be, as should all other rapists and other people who take advantage of people sexually. I mean, come on. Uh, junior Cole, you want to engage in same-sex or homosexual activity, it is your right, but find somebody who is willing and is of age to do it with you. That's your business. Go do it. I, who, who, who am I to tell you who to have sex with? But don't do it with a nine-year-old. Don't do it with anybody under age. And that person must be of age and must give their consent before you, 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 you know, but to hold a knife to a nine-year-old boy's uh, throat and, and compel him to have sex with you is repulsive, it is ridiculous, it is unacceptable, it is reprehensible, and you should be in jail where you are. And in as much as it doesn't take away that the anguish and the agony experienced by that little child, but at least the family will get some justice. They will be assuaged to a degree by justice being served. Let's take uh, some more calls then. All right, let's take somebody on the WhatsApp line. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Gila. Yeah, okay. welcome. Good morning, Costa. Morning, morning, morning. Yeah, this is Brother Samuel. Look, Costa, there is nothing we're going to panic about. Okay? The only thing I really appreciate you for organizing or putting out the agreement together. And whosoever, look, I believe I have the strong uh, convincedness that we're going to win in the CPD, going to win 2023, come what may. But every agreement I have that you are putting together along with the committee, let whosoever that going to be uh, or the leader must abide by every rules and regulation from that point. Nothing we need to fight for. Everybody eyes are open right now. Everybody has ideas to social media. So when it comes to election 2023, nothing we should not be telling about. All we need to do right now is to get people in the zero counties, consultancy them, look that way this way, do it this way. Even some of us are abroad, get our relatives involved into it. No one should be afraid of in this government. Why is someone oh. here looking today today? They say someone is. So if anybody tries to carry anything wrong in that country for election or power free, mm. they will face the same old problem. Okay, Take it or leave it. Alright. Thank you. Uh, Baga, hold on. Baga? Yeah? Tell Pagomo. Mm -hmm. I try sending the twenty dollars as I normally send data to people using easy top up, but unfortunately for some reason it is not responding this morning. So I had somebody call him from Liberia, and they sent him a text message to try to send him the money. Well, I mean, he can choose to buy the data or do whatever with it, the twenty dollars. But he's not picking his calls, and he let him, let him check his text message. Okay. Yeah, they sent him a text message, and they call him several times. Let him check. They want to send him the 20 bucks. All right, the man, but you know, it's like, good morning. Yeah, hello, Papa, hello, Papa. Man, but you know, morning. Yeah, I want to address what the last caller said, Papa. 
Shabbat and Waka. Right now, we can't wait to Friday 23 to start going in counties. We have to start to get our people right now. Because those people, they are at the end of the hour, they can put anything. Well, I can't say they can't do anything said to say the city in the election. They are. They can't do anything. We supposed to start. And once I want to acknowledge you, they were not like, can you imagine the same questions that I get from you? Just to so listen to the show. Then my mm-hmm. deputy, she got three kekes. She, yeah, she brought people. And when I end up, there's an opposition black. The right. places, Jeff Park. I wish I had money for video. Yeah, so fast that we're moving on. And if they yeah. the red kids and all those people who saw my city for children, this is a guy there that their government is still not over there. Who needs children? She said, I'm not a man shaking. No, they are giving you more damage. The dead are the kind of president we get. Okay. She's taking out over there. All right, let's do it. We are saying, we are saying, nobody will keep us. If the first part of the evening starts, we will ask you to see if you give me your time, we will start. We already started. We will start with the drama with this step. We are going to wait for people to start and say, you are going to move before we move. No. We are going to wait for you. We are going to treat you. We are going to treat you. We are going to wait for you. So we know that it's going to be for We'll take it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Papa. Okay. See, you know what? Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Costa. Good morning, Wakai. Thank you. You know, you may not agree with me this morning uh, to some extent what I'm about to say. But to be very honest with you, Pedro, whenever I hear old man says Jackson speaks the way he speaks, I get educated. You know why? You know why? I mean, mm. get, get me educated? Mm. I am educated because Owen Sam Jackson has sound brilliant at the age. If you listen to Owen Jackson, the, the way in which he propounds, this is one of the best that Nigeria can boast of. But therefore, Owen Jackson to have sat there and ever thought that George William would have done just up. You see, look, let me be honest with you. Let's, let's look. That's, that's true. That's true. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, James Akwe, formerly of ERDC. Not the first time? No, no. Go, go ahead. Take uh, two more calls. Then we'll close up. Yeah, you know, uh, this morning I was listening to a local radio, your man, Noam Budike, uh, complaining that people using his name on, on social media. <laughs> so his public relations officer uh, came up. Uh, they had a press conference. Let me just go. Of the chairperson notified him that they saw him in the chat room of Henry Costa. And he said, No, I'm not on Facebook. So I, I don't have an official uh, Facebook page. So I can't be in Henry Costa chat room when I'm not on Facebook. The person in question. Mm, so I'm not going to screenshot the, the comments that were made in the Henry Costa's chat room and send it to Castro Mataki. He in turn. The Ministry of Justice complaining this, and he brought this to our attention. Um, as public relations uh, officer, we wrote an official communication to the president and the chief. So that's it. The men complaining, the men just you know, <laughs> complaining to the Ministry of Justice that somebody using his name in your chat room. Oh, so, wait, wait. Yeah. Nobu Digi, the damn Nigerian criminal, <laughs> is complaining yeah. that somebody is using his name in the chat. It's not a chat room, exactly. In it, it's a group. Yeah, it's a group. Yeah, no, I know you know, but you're just quoting what they are saying. But it's not a chat room. Because when I say chat room, it means we are in a closed group where we are chatting with each other or with one another. But it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a group. It's the largest social Liberian social media group, the Costa Show, two hundred and eighty thousand members. But here is a point, though. He says somebody using his name, Noah Dicky. So what you want to do? Carry them to court? Mm -hmm. What? This mm -hmm. Salaman, mm -hmm. this Salaman Swan, not the Digi, who should not be serving in Liberian government. I mean, you know, Jovia is just, oh God. You know, this is the reason why we seek this man's downfall. Because this man seeks Liberia's downfall and humiliation and degradation and retrogression. To take a Nobu Diki, a froster, <laughs> and make him chairman of our LACC, an integrity institution when the man himself has no integrity. What kind of man has documents with multiple different dates, contradictory mm -hmm. information? His birthday, he's got three birthdays. Yeah. When they ask him, he said, oh, that does not mean that the poor wrote a document. And how can this man be chairman of LSCC and Georgia still has him there? This Salomon Swan George Weir. You know, you know, so then no about digging talking about people using a knee in a cause. So who is this person speaking now? This person who was speaking? The public relations officer for uh, uh, LACC. Look at that kind of nonsense. So public relations officer of LACC is complaining. That somebody mm -hmm. is impersonating that idiot Salomon Swan Noah no, no, Diki. Yeah. Google human beings that are being impersonated, they're not complaining. That you mm -hmm. complaining, you criminal are you, you froster, impersonator, eh? Forged nationality, you got fake Liberian nationality that like you don't want to dare open your mouth to complain about. You know, I don't I don't, don't blame you. If you are in jail. For mm -hmm. violating our 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 alien nationality law and impersonating a Liberian citizen, you wouldn't be making noise about somebody impersonating you. Who the hell are you? You complain about somebody impersonating you? Damn criminal are you? No abu digi, stupid fool. <laughs> Telling your stupid boss job we are. They did they what kind of thing and pissing out to my man. A stupid criminal. But who, what, what kind of good knee you get before somebody when you want to use it? Yeah? What kind of good knee? My boy, you're big. You're yelling all the time. No, I'm digging. Complaining that somebody using a knee on Facebook. So, LSC is not going to do what to go and send their, their public relations officer. Play that nonsense again, brother. Play that clip again. Okay. Uh, let me take it from the uh, top LSC. Stupid uh, fool. Come in quickly. Okay. Hey, begin at talk. All right. Notified him that they saw him in the 
chat room of Henry Costa and he said, no, I'm not on Facebook, so I, like, I don't have an official uh, Facebook page, so I can't be in Henry Costa chat room when I'm not on Facebook. The person in question screenshot the, the comments that were made in the Henry Costa's chat room and send it to Castro Wumaduki. He in turn wrote the Ministry of Justice complaining this and he brought this to our attention um, as public relations uh, officer. We wrote an official communication to the exited Stop, that, stop, 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 stop. You see how there's some swan not get what to do? So one of your friends saw his name in the mm -hmm. Henry Costa chat room which is actually mm -hmm. the Costa Show, the largest mm -hmm. Liberian Facebook group, and his friend took a screenshot of that name, that Facebook account, impersonating him, and sent it to the venerable, clean, squeaky clean, Norbu Dicky. And Norbu Dicky is so bothered by it that Norbu Dicky wrote the Minister of Justice to complete. My boy, you're to the nonsense, to the son mm -hmm. of what kind of trouble that total liar job we are pouring so? <laughs> no, but take it complain that somebody using a knee on Facebook in the Costa Show group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nigga. Hey, nigga. Yeah, we are, we are, we are, we are. Let me tell you something. Tell you what you're making our heart to cry. The day will catch you. 2023 when we quarter you in an election, being the way we will treat you. Hi, you will not believe it. I tell you, so you we we'll plan it for you. They will, nobody will protect you. Nobody in CPP will protect you. Not from people like Hosta. But when I walk let me ask you a question. Mm. What kind of CPP president will able to look at? We will push the writing to be done on local Mel and Costa and Pope Costa and the kind of support we got. That's it. You think you know the world? You know the scare Mel and Costa? Because we, we have massive popular support from the Liberian people. So we will mm -hmm. be strong in the in the CPP government. So you will not be who, 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 who you want to scare who? Me? When we say let go of job, we are then you want to say, oh, I won't tell the Liberian people. But the CPP that will try to make deal with Dawia or to make him go walk free, we will fight you. Go to the president, whoever the president will, will, will be, our Pedro will fight you. If you try to protect Dawia, protect someone to them. The way Dawia making our heart to hell, that total liar Dawia, walking and lie about everything. The day we get power, and that day is coming very soon, the way we deal with that Boko, you will not even believe it. I know I'm going to dig completely that somebody using a knee in a course or show chat room. That was an idiot say public relations officer. You know what I call chat room? <laughs> How you can be public relations officer in that little chat room? You don't know the difference between chat room and page. Yeah, and group. It's a yeah. group. It's, it's a chat. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a social media group. Mm -hmm. We have a group. There's chat room that the one world. If people can join and they can communicate with each other, that one different. This is a group. Okay, that one not important. But to see that Norbu Diggy will be writing the Minister of Justice to say that somebody is impersonating him. So they will launch an investigation. You, yeah. You see the kind of nonsense? They will investigate. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God. What kind of trouble is it? Nobu Diggy is offended that his name, his good name, his good name, his high earned reputation is being dragged in the mud by a, an impersonator in the Constant Show group. Hey, go get pissy. Oh, go, go get pissy. But we wait. We wait. We lie in ambush. We are waiting. No, but Diggy, they don't win power. Just go Nigeria. My man. No, but Diggy, my go Nigeria. My people, let me tell you today. Your mom, remember, we will not forget No, but Diggy. No, but Diggy, the day they call a election result, you will be in Lagos or wherever. Don't be in a row. Be in Lagos. People will tie you. We would, look, 
the president will be sitting out there, we will be giving the order. Y'all go catch that man. And it will not be witch hunt. It will be clear, 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 because of clear violations and abuse of our laws. This man, this man is not a Liberian citizen. He's impersonating. The man is impersonating, then he says somebody impersonating him. But I can hear him, I'm saying. He's impersonating a Liberian, then he says somebody is impersonating him. Sarama Suan Wabudigi. My man, I see your man. I'm bleeding. I bleed total liar dog. We are. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. Uh. What kind of nonsense this is? Stupid man dog. We are for a real mess. No one digging or can complain about being a person that somebody person that they need. Nonsense. What time? You better be in that job. I'm feeling money that you guys are.